Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and we are about to see another Blender video tutorial and this time around we'll be creating a nice uh, loopable uh, clip in Blender and I think you'll love the result so let's begin we have the default cube here selected and I'll hit the X key and select delete and now I'll hit shift A and add Mesotorus and I'll hit 7 on my mirror keypad and I think our torus looks pretty nice and what I'll do for my torus here is move over to the object modifiers and what I want is to add a modifier to the selected object and I'll add build modifier and as we said before the build modifier starts from frame 1 and it takes the build modifier and 100 frames to build the object so if we scroll the timeline up, you can see the torus building, but what we'll do for this object is enable randomize, and you can see that now Blender selects random faces to appear in time. So now I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad and then 5 for the front author view, and I'll hit Ctrl, Alt and 0 to roughly position my camera. And now I'll hit 7 on my memory keypad for the top author view, right mouse button click to select the camera. And I'll hit the Z key to grab it and move it at about here. And I'll set the X value to minus 2. And let's set the Y value to minus 6, minus 0 0.6, excuse me. And the Z value, let's set it to 0. Alright. Now I'm hitting 0 on my numeric keypad for the camera perspective view and you can see how the torus looks from the inside and now that we have the camera selected I'll move over to the camera object data, click this little icon and I'll change the focal length, bring it down from 35, let's set it down to 12 OK Now I'm going to select the torus again, right mouse button click to select it and move over to the modifiers panel and what I'll do for the torus here and for the build modifier is click apply or perhaps let's move some frames down we want slightly less uh, faces to appear for the object and we're good at about there and now I'll click apply to apply the build modifier now it's time to add a few more modifiers click add modifier and I'll add a displace modifier now you can see the displace modifier, the displace modifier needs a texture in order to displace the object geometry according to the texture data, so I'm clicking new and Blender creates a texture for me. Now I'll add another modifier, click add modifier and I'll add a subdivision surface. I'll bring the subdivisions for the view and the render up to 2, ok. And what I'll also do is move over to the shading tab uh, under the object tools and click smooth ok looking good and what I'll do now is add another modifier and click add modifier and I'll add a solidify modifier and what the solidify modifier does is that it adds some thickness to our torus here and what I'll do for the solidify modifier is increase the thickness value set it from 0 0.01 to 0 0.04 ok and now you can see what we're getting ok looking good so far and I'll now hit 7 on my numeric keypad for the top of view and I have the torus here selected and as you can see we have the start frame set to 1 and the end frame is uh, 240 and the frame rate is set to 30 frames per second so we're having uh, an 8 seconds uh, animation here so moving back to frame 1 and I'll hit the I key while the torus is selected to insert a rotation keyframe for frame 1. Now I'm clicking here and moving up to frame 240 and I'll hit R and Z to rotate on the Z axis and I'll rotate my torus for, let's rotate it for 360 degrees along the global Z axis you can see at the bottom left corner OK, and I'll hit the I key to insert another rotation keyframe. 
So I'm hitting zero on my numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view. Moving back to frame one and hitting play to take a look. And as you can see, what we're getting here is that we're having the animation. It starts slowly, then speeds up, and then ends again uh, a bit slowly. And we don't want that. We want to have a constant speed for the animation. So what I'll do now is split the 3D view, click and drag, and I'll change the top 3D view into a graph editor. Now first thing I'll do for the uh, graph editor here is expand the rotation and we are not using the X and Y rotation so I'm selecting them and hitting the X key to delete them, delete the X and Y rotation and for the Z rotation you can see the curve here it starts moving slowly then speeds up and then adds up slowly again and in order to have a constant speed all we have to do is move over click to key and interpolation mode and change it to linear so you can now see how the how the graph looks okay and if we play back our animation now you can see that we're having a constant speed for the animation okay now this looks pretty nice and what I'll do now is hit Shift D to create a duplicate and you can see the duplicated torus here. I'll just hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the duplicated objects and move to the object modifiers for a while. And what I'll do for the second torus is delete the solidify modifier, click this X icon to delete the solidify modifier. And what I'll also do is change the mid level. Let's bring it down let's say to 0 0.35 okay so we are now having two toruses one that uses the solidify modifier and one that does not use the solidify and i'm selecting the inner torus here let's take a look i'm hitting zero on my memory keypad for the camera perspective view and what we can also do for the for the torus is add some extra animation by animating the uh, values here for the mid level and the strength. So let's take a look. We're at frame one. And what I'll do here is hit the I key while the cursor is over the strength value. And as you can see, it now changes color, and that means that we have a keyframe for the strength for frame one. Let's move to frame 120. And let's change the strength value. Let's increase it a bit. I'll set it to 1.5. And then hit the I key while it cursors over the value to insert another uh, strength keyframe for frame 120. And in order to have a loopable animation, uh, you should always remember that you should be having both the start and the end values uh, set to the same amount. So for this 10 here, we're starting at 1 and we should also end with the strength value set to 1. Okay, and I'm hitting the I key now to insert another keyframe for the strength for frame 240. And in order to check if your clip is loopable, you should uh, move to the start and end frame and see that they both look exactly the same. So we're at frame 240 now and moving back to frame 1 and it all looks the same. Okay, now time to animate the mid-level value here and I'll hit the I key while uh, we're at frame 1 and while the cursor is over the mid-level value, hit the I key to insert the keyframe and now I'll move over to frame 60. Okay, and I'm changing the middle level now. Let's set it down to 0 0.4. And hit the I key to insert a keyframe for frame 60. Now moving 60 frames up to frame 120. And I'll change the middle level now. Let's set it to 0 0.7. Or perhaps 0 0.6. Or 0 0.5. Okay and hitting the I key over the value here to insert a keyframe for uh, frame 120 and moving 
60 frames up to frame 180 and now I'll set mid level let's set it to 0 0.3 or perhaps 0 0.4 and I'm setting this to a value lower than 0 0.35 because I want the second torus here to always be outside of the first one and I'll hit the I key to insert the keyframe for mid level for frame 180 and as we said before in order to have a loopable animation we have to set the same value to uh, the start and end frame so for frame 1 we're having a mid level value of 0 0.5 and we also want to have a 0 0.5 for the for frame 240 so let's set it to 0 0.5 and hit the I key to insert a keyframe for the mid level for frame 240. Now it's time to move over to the materials. I want to add the material to my first torus here, and the first torus is the one that uses the solidify modifier. So I'm clicking new to add a new material, and I'll call this one, let's call it material underscore one. Okay, and I'll bring the diffuse color down. I want to make it darker and what I'll also do is make it slightly blue uh, about here and I'll also bring the diffuse intensity down from 0 0.8 let's set it to 0 0.2 and I'll also bring the specular intensity from 0 0.5 down to 0 now let's collapse the shading and the transparency and all I want for this material here is to add some mirror click here to enable mirror I'll increase the reflectivity, set it from 0 to 0 0.2 and I'll also change the reflectivity color and I want to make it slightly darker OK and I'll increase the Fresnel value let's bring this one up and I think it's good at 2.7 alright and now our first material is ready for the inner torus I'm going to right mouse button click to select the outer torus and click new for a new material for this object as well. We're going to call this one material underscore 2 and I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to 1, bring the specular intensity down to 0 and I'll expand the shading and add a small emit value here from 0 to 0 0.2 and what I'll also do is click wire and we want this object to be rendered as a wireframe and in order to see the wireframe uh, the second torus as a wireframe in our viewer as well you can go to the object data and out of the display tab change it from texture to wire ok now moving over to the world options let's take a look at the world options and let's change them a bit I'm clicking paper sky and blend sky and I want to change the horizon color, let's make it brighter and I think we're good at about here, ok now let's take a look, I want to render an image to see how it looks and as you can see we're having the reflections here from the uh, first torus and we can also clearly see the wireframe around our objects so hitting the escape key and we'll soon move over to the compositor but before we do that I want to select the camera I want to add a, a, a depth of field effect so I'm clicking limits to display the camera limits and you can see we're having this little yellow cross here and what I'll do for this one is increase the distance and you can see that the yellow cross moves away from the camera as I'm increasing the distance and I'm going to set this, let's set this to 2 so we're changing the focus value here and while the camera is selected I'll hit 0 on my numeric keypad for the camera perspective view and I'll change the rotation here a bit I want to change the Y rotation let's set it to 5 so I'm uh, creating some nice angle for my camera and I'll also change the Z rotation let's make our camera look at the inside of the torus and I think we're good at about there and I'm hitting 7 on my numeric keypad for the top overview 
And what I'll also do is move my camera a bit out. And I think we're good at about there. Let's take a look through the camera perspective view. I'm hitting zero for the camera perspective. And I think it looks pretty nice. And now that we have the uh, depth of field uh, point here set up, we should render another image so that Blender will also calculate the Z buffer. Okay. Now I'm hitting the escape key. And I think it looks pretty nice. And I'll expand my graph editor here and change it to a node editor. I'm hitting the N key to make the properties here go away. And we'll be using compositing and click use nodes. And we're having the render layers and a composite node. Let's bring them to the sides. And I'll hit Shift A. And we need another output. And this output will be a viewer. Let's make our viewer bigger also. And let's begin with our compositing. I want filter. Let's use a defocus node, bring this one up and for the defocus node here we'll be also using the Z value, take the output of the render layers and make it an input for the defocus node and I should also bring the output of the defocus node and make it an input for the viewer. I'll also click backdrop so we can take a look. Now I'm going to check use Z buffer because we're actually using the Z buffer from the scene here. And I'll uncheck preview. And all you have to do now is play with the F stop value here. It's set to 128 by default. Let's set it down to 16. And as you can see, we're now having the depth of field effect kicking in, and I think it looks pretty nice. Okay. Now time to add a few more filters, a few more effects here for the compositing. And we are going to add a glare node. Let's connect the glare node. And I'm going to, to change the glare node here from Strix. Let's change it to Fog Low. Okay, now, so the Fog Low is in place. And what we have to do now is bring the threshold value down because we want Blender to apply this effect to less brighter pixels and let's set it to 0.1 and we're waiting to see the effect kicking in or perhaps let's set it down to 0 ok so you can see the fog glow here applied to our scene I'll hit shift D to duplicate the glare node and what I'm doing here is changing is duplicating the glare node and of course I'll change it from fog low let's change it to ghosts and for the ghosts effect now I'll increase the threshold we don't want it to be applied onto pretty much every pixel of the image and I'll bring the threshold up to 0 0.3 alright now time for a final glare node and I'll hit shift D to duplicate this glare node and connect this one as well and I'll change it from Ghosts to Strix now for the Strix Glare node I'll bring the Strix, the Strix value here from 4 down to 2 and I think this looks pretty nice let's just increase the threshold for the Ghosts value and what I'll also do for the strex is change the color modulation value here. Let's set it from 0 0.25 to 0 0.6. Alright. And now time for a final node. Let's organize our nodes a bit. And I'll hit Shift A. And move over to Distort and select Lens Distortion. Okay. And for the lens distortion node here, all we'll do is add some dispersion here and we'll set it to 0 0.1. Okay. And in order for everything to work and appear in your final render, all you have to do is take the output from the final compositing node and make it an input for the composite node. Alright. So this looks pretty nice. Let's expand our 3D view and let's take a look. Let's render an image to see. 
let's write about here and I'll change the resolution set it to 1280 and for the X and 720 for the Y bring it up to 100 and change it from image editor to full screen and click render another nice thing about this scene is that it renders pretty fast and you can see that the result is pretty sweet too and as I said before this is a looping animation, a loopable animation that, and that means that you'll be able to play this 8 seconds of animation over and over and over again and the result looks pretty sweet so this is it, I'll be rendering some uh, clips for you to see and this is a little bit of a tutorial, we'll, we've used simple objects and some modifiers to create a cool looking clip, of course getting some help from the composite notes here and it's time to save this one, click file, save as and let's save this one as looping T, ok and this is Dimitrius Christou, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and thanks for watching.